I am Asha Alexander, Principal and uh, Executive Leader of Climate Change at GEMS Legacy School. This school has been in existence for the last 30 years. It was earlier known as the Kindergarten Starters, a primary school in the heart of Dubai, where we cater to the mid-market segment of the population. So it's a very low fee paying school. We have around 5,000 students and it existed as a primary school uh, all of these years. In April this year, we were given permission to move to becoming a through K-12 provision. And uh, with that, there was a change in name to the GEMS Legacy School. To me, innovation is something that happens everywhere and it's driven by inquiry. In fact, inquiry is the engine that drives innovation. And sometimes it's mistaken for just being associated with technology, uh, but I would like to point out that innovation can happen in the environment, in the curriculum, in strategies and policies and procedures. And so innovation is something that comes out of the need for a better, more effective, and uh, easier solution to a kind of a problem that the school may be facing, the community may be facing, or maybe it's a world problem. Innovation entails uh, failure because it's something about uh, trying again and again. It, there is a series of trial and error. So sometimes it might seem like a waste of resources when you waste time or you waste uh, teacher's time or you're taking a lot of material to create whatever it is that you wanted to. And that is difficult when uh, innovation cannot happen, I think, when there is a rigid structure. It needs flexibility in order to be at its best. And innovation, I think, is something which people come in mistakenly looking for in classrooms in 40 minutes and hoping to see something. I think rather you should be looking for students engaged in discussing a problem, in deduction, in analyzing, in questioning the practice, and in driving their learning. So I think it's just a mindset and it can be uh, grown and it can be embedded in any school who is supported in uh, failing again and again whose governors and whose leaders are ready to embrace failure as part of the learning. I would, I would certainly touch upon Lonometer because it actually looks at innovating the environment. Uh, when I heard about Professor Stephen Heppel and the work he was doing around how environments affect student learning, I was intrigued. And then when I got in touch with him, he said, I have a prototype of what's called a learnometer. And would you like to have one in your school? So he sent it across to me through a very dear friend, Phil Redhead, who was working with GEMS at that time. And I placed it in a grade two classroom and I said, now let's see what this does, because Professor Heppel said it logs data and I can compare it with schools and organizations around the world. After a few weeks, I began to look at the readings. We could see it daily. And I found that especially the carbon dioxide levels were appallingly high in the classrooms, which were very small in size for the number of students in the classroom. So we formed a group with students and teachers to discuss how can we sort this out? Do we open windows? Or what is it that we're going to do? And children said, don't you think plants absorb carbon dioxide? That thought set us off to look at some NASA studies where there were researchers to show different types of plants which absorb carbon dioxide at a faster rate than others. So we picked up the uh, English ivy, the money plant, the spider plant, rubber plant, and something else and we had these five varieties placed in classrooms in 21 pots on a green wall in every single classroom we have 162 classrooms if i'm to say that the uh, uh, carbon dioxide levels dropped it did but not to the extent that we were expecting 
So we had to further refine this innovation. It's not about relying on one thing. So when I'm talking about innovation being, you can't see results, the results you want immediately, maybe you have to be patient. So we looked at our timetable and we said, how do we make sure that our students exit the classroom after every two periods of 40 minutes? So we made it possible now for students to go out for music, for PE, for lab, library, and thus when the classrooms became empty, the carbon dioxide levels dropped. And we did a study and we saw that the concentration and focus of students increased and the performance, the academic performance of students, especially special needs students, was really remarkably different. The other innovation I'd like to talk about is um, modifying the way we did professional development. Most schools have standalone PDs. We too had them. We had the principal or tell all or somebody coming in and talking to teachers. We did need based PD. We had common planning time where teachers spoke to each other and shared their work. But what we found was the depth of knowledge in teachers was not as much as we would like it to be. Uh, good teachers need to have a sound understanding of their subject matter. So we wanted them to inquire. So we invited them to be part of action researchers. When we started the first year, we had just five teachers who did literature reviews, who read, who researched, and to study the impact of uh, the, the uh, question and the study. And in the subsequent years, we had more than 100 teachers every year. We have 125 in the last year. Every year we hold an action research carousel to share our findings with GEMS and the wider uh, community in Dubai, because that is how you develop capacity in teachers. We found that using action research as a tool for capacity building, for building knowledge and subject content, for making teachers question everything that was given to them. So it was, if we said, use this resource, they would ask why. They would look at how it connects with their curriculum. And this enabled us to make sure that our practitioners always asked questions. Because when teachers begin asking questions, they embrace the same in the classroom when students ask questions. So these are two things that uh, we uh, found have made a significant impact in the school. Supportive for, of innovation means that you give uh, teachers and the principal and the school the freedom and the flexibility to fail. So if you don't do that, you're not going to find innovation taking place. And like I said earlier, you have to be really patient waiting for uh, the impact of the innovation. Like when we started the action research, if you, if you measured what is the impact that was just five teachers to today when 125, which is more than half our staff are, uh, you know, in, uh, entertaining this kind of approach. I find that in the governors must be willing to connect schools with one another because to inspire and to innovate, you need to be inspired. Innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum. It, it's some idea that's floating around somewhere which I take and I tweak and I adapt to my context. So if teachers have to understand what is innovation, they need to be connected with schools or with industries where innovation is happening. And that will probably make them think about how to innovate. I would like governors to be talking to the leadership teams, to students and supporting student agency. And finally, I would like to say that Innovation is not something that happens when you give somebody something and say, go and innovate. It's something that happens from inside out. It's something when people come across a problem, they want to get to the root of the problem, they identify the reason why that problem has occurred, then they look around, they see what do I have around me which I can use maybe to manipulate or maneuver and create this solution. And when I don't have it, maybe I need support from governors to give me money or to give me resources through which I can make that innovation happen.